Bonjour à toutes et tous, vous écoutez First Print, votre podcast comics préféré et vous avez appuyé sur lecture pour un nouveau numéro du format Super Friends qui est l'émission qui va à la rencontre des personnes qui font vivre la pop culture, la culture comics, la bande dessinée par leur travail au quotidien et vous le savez, on adore aller à la rencontre des artistes et des scénaristes de bande dessinée pour pouvoir discuter dans le fond de leurs œuvres et aujourd'hui on est ultra content de profiter de la venue des frères Miranda, donc Roy et Inaki Miranda en France pour pouvoir aller leur poser quelques questions au sujet d'un album qui s'appelle We Live qui est sorti en ce début d'année aux éditions 404 Comics c'est un titre qui est excellent, un titre qui mélange post-apocalyptique un mélange post-apocalyptique euh, sous fond de euh, un peu The Last of Us avec un univers euh, de fantasy à la euh, Miyazaki façon un peu Princesse Mononoke et qui prend des directions assez surprenantes donc on vous prévient c'est un podcast qui reste quand même un peu à ceux qui ont lu la bande dessinée parce qu'on va vraiment devoir rentrer dans le fond de l'intrigue et aussi euh, Super Friends V oblige la suite de la discussion sera en anglais avec quelques petits passages euh, voilà euh, qui qui oblige en fait ben, les non anglophones à, à attendre peut-être si on arrive à vous faire une version euh, sous-titrée euh, plus tard euh, sur YouTube c'est comme ça que je pense qu'on va pouvoir un peu en faire profiter aussi euh, les non anglophones mais pour l'heure le podcast c'est d'abord en anglais et donc une fois que le générique est lancé la discussion va pouvoir commencer on se retrouve tout de suite après C'était difficile à comprendre. Euh... <laughs> Vous avez rien compris du tout. You did not understand anything at all. But we are switching to English right now so we can speak uh, and we can understand each other. Uh, so I'm really, really happy to have you guys, uh, Roy and Inaki, in the podcast. Hello, guys. Hello, and Hello. thank you for having us. So I just want to uh, quickly start by, uh, because it's the first time that you are in the podcast First Prince, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. can you just uh, a little bit introduce yourselves to the people who are listening to the podcast, please? Well, uh, we are brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Iñaki. And I've been working in the comic industry in the, in the United States for almost two decades. But this is the first time Uh, we create something I create and with with Roy uh, a story of our own and and write it and do everything so it's it's we live and and that's that's all I I think I can say about myself yeah sure I'm Roy and I'm Roy I'm and a music artist and uh, and a creative mind and I'm no tengo mucho contacto con el mundo del cómic and no he trabajado en el mundo del cómic I'm not working in comic industry, but that's the first experience and and I love to make that with my brother. Okay, so yeah, he just said that uh, you, he has he n'a pas travaillé en fait dans l'industrie des comics. Hein. C'est bah, son premier travail en fait quand on fait des recherches sur Comic Vine, on voit que effectivement le nom de Roy Miranda c'est vraiment sur sur Willy qui qui apparaît. Mais par contre qu'il est aussi musicien et qu'il est euh, créé créatif. Et donc c'était un projet pour faire avec euh, ses ses frères. Et ju justement, uh, what made you uh, um, like uh, why did you want to go uh, and create something with your brother because you were uh, actively working in the comics industry you've, you've got uh, gigs with uh, DC Comics and uh, every uh, uh, and a lot of uh, publishers so why did you want to make uh, We Live to, Together because uh, it's quite special to create something with some someone who is from your own family yes yes I mean my first goal since I started uh, working in comics was to create something I, uh, I did Uh, tried to to books very early on, but the sales were low. I remember. I mean, was I was young, uh, and and from that moment on, I decided that uh, I was going to you know, work for hire and get into the U.S. industry, and that's what I've been doing for uh, what I said almost two decades. But my goal was there. But I knew I wanted to create something and write because. Uh, I think I got I get more more pleasure from writing than from drawing. Drawing is the instrument that I need to put you know the creation and the narration down uh, to visuals. And and that's uh, like uh, I started talking with Roy because I had an idea uh, uh, years ago and I told him the idea and we just started talking about that that story and suddenly it became something that we really both liked 
and just in one afternoon, we just started talking. So then that moment we real, we realized that we work very well together and we have like two creative minds and a similar sense of, of narration. So from that moment on, we just kept on talking and creating stories. And it took years. I mean, we live, we started talking about, we live like uh, six years ago, I think. Oh, all right. Okay, six years. So, and we were uh, just talking about stories and creating parallel stories at the same time. We had like f three, I think three or four stories that we, depending on the day, we took one story and let's talk about this. Or I thought about that, this idea to that story. Mm -hmm. What do you think? And and it started building. It started building. And when it came the moment that uh, we decided to pitch it to Aftershock, uh, we picked the, the I think the idea that was strongest to us. That was that was we live. So it was really uh, very organic how it came together. Just when you realize that it works, we work very well together. Okay, but from the beginning, did you have in mind that uh, we live is not uh, like uh, what it's supposed to be at the beginning when we uh, when we start reading the first issue, we don't know what's going ha what's going to happen, and there is quite a twist at at the end that uh, just says, okay, so we live is not what it's supposed to be about, and so this particular plot was here from the beginning it it was also very organic it was from the beginning and it wasn't because we started with just uh, a world situation mm. where the world is going to end i remember i think the first conversation that we had about uh, this story was we started speaking about uh, the energy crisis and there was going to be a moment where uh, the this jump from fossil uh, energy to mm -hmm. green energy was not the world was going not going to be prepared that's a theory that it's out there so there was going to be a, a like a like a halt in the world because mm -hmm. uh, we we weren't enough uh, prepared to to take on the green energy so we just started talking about the world coming to an end and how the situation would be and then we added the climate change and then we added, okay, so let's say the world comes to an end and the and the aliens, mm -hmm. we have a, a message from outer space and they're, they're saying they're going to save us. So that took us to, okay, how would they save us? And that took us to, okay, they would save the children and they will only save 5,000 5, 5, children. And that took us, okay, how would they pick those children? Mm -hmm. And this, then we came with the idea of the bracelets. But... At the same time, we thought, okay, uh, but how would the bracelet be used? Because you can't trust the human to, no. you know, to select because you know that would be corrupt. So we said okay, they had to just throw it like like a meteor shower. They had to throw it randomly to <laughs> in the earth and let them, you know, uh, just whoever picks it, and it, it couldn't be transferable. So it was just uh, an idea. Then we had to create the logic to the idea, and then the another idea. So, and I remember we were, uh, because all this almost happens always in, in, in the car, in, in the road. Mm. Um, and it was at night and we were going to a, a, a country road, a secondary road. And suddenly when we were thinking, okay, but what does the bracelet do? Sí, pero an antes de eso, hubo un, ¿y qué pasa si no viene? Oh yes, and be yeah. Before that, we said we started thinking about okay. So the the aliens say they're going to save us, but what if you know the, the people uh, go, the children go to the place and waiting for them to appear, and what what if they don't appear? Mm. And like you like we put ourselves and and the children in that situation and the human where they put a lot of trust in something, and suddenly it's the end of the world. So. That took us to a mystical place also like, okay, what is time? What is life? Uh, you know, um, and does time really matter how much you live a life or, or it's just the moment you live? So it, we just started, you know, philosophically talking about it. And then came the, the great idea that I think it, it, it created, we live, the universe. And we said, what if uh, the bracelet uh, transformed you? And it, it wasn't what it, it, everybody thought it was going to be. They weren't here to save us in that in that way. They were going to give us the element to to save ourselves. Mm. So that's when 
uh, we got the ending of the first chapter. The first ask, uh, yeah, yeah. So there were, I guess, a lot of discussions between you two to uh, to elaborate uh, the plot, but also the uh, the whole universe. Yes, yes, <laughs> a lot, a lot. <laughs> I mean, okay. was, what, what was your working routine? Uh, first, um, we sp we speak a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, I think I I have an idea. And then and the, 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 the next day, the next day, the others say, no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, we select the best. And when we have talked about uh, all whole, whole art, whole story, we put the, the pieces correctly. No, no. Yeah. You can just speak Spain if you, if you prefer and uh, have your brother translate it. It's, okay. really, it's really all right. Uh. Cuando, cuando ya lo tenemos claro, se colocan las piezas. Y a partir de ahí empezamos a escribir. Pero antes de, de escribir, hablamos mucho. Discutimos mucho, uh -huh. eliminamos lo que no sirve y, y solo nos quedamos con lo bueno. Like, before, you know, actually writing the, the story... We discuss a lot uh, and we argue a lot and and only the the ideas that we both say yes to are the ones that yeah. uh, okay. are put on the table. And once we have the logic and the ideas that we both like, then we create the plot for, with with that. But we first like uh, I have a uh, the 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 express no expression the, the the idea that we are like. Launching mi uh, nuclear missiles, and we have we need both to press both the, keys, okay, you know? the keys. Yeah, you right. can't mm -hmm. you can't launch it without uh, both keys. Mm -hmm. So that that I mean, I mean, the good thing that we are brothers, we can say you know that's a shitty idea, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have no. You can problem speak with freely to each exactly. other. Mm. So uh, that guarantees us that at least for us, uh, there's no bad idea that will go through because. We we're both the editor of the other one, you know. Okay, and so how did you, did you set also the world of uh, we live? Because you imagined that like uh, there was a war and that the continents are rearranged and there are nine uh, great cities. Uh, so how did you uh, imagine the the whole situation and also in terms of uh, visuals? Yeah, the visuals came. I I had a uh, because the logic was already there with from speaking so much. Uh, I think I just I knew I had a playground where I, I knew where the limits were and I knew where I could go over the limits because that would mean that we will go back to the logic and create a new logic because I draw I, I designed this exactly so it, I think everything we benefited from the freedom that we had and, and the designs the same Uh, I had no I no limits limitations to what I was going to draw, and unless then Roy says no, that doesn't work. But uh, mostly that didn't happen because we already on the same page mm. about the world. And then I think I made it more crazy with you know the the creature designs and and yeah, wh where did you get the inspiration from uh, for, for this creature so it looks like like tigers or apes uh, and, and stuff like that but uh, did you have uh, also other references in terms of I don't know films video games other comic books maybe mm. well let me think I don't know May, I mean at that time I remember uh, but not yeah a little bit in the creatures I was playing we both were playing The Last of Us okay yeah, yeah. but that was another obvious inspiration but more in terms of uh, you know the, the characters and the, the, the mood yes okay. yes so yeah all yes right. <laughs> and, and then there's also a lot of not a lot but it's a strange uh, influence uh, you know Death Stranding okay yeah and and I think the creatures came from Uh, let me think. It came from two two places. Uh, one place is uh, I'm having a, a I from since years from now, like ten years, I started working on a project, an artistic project, more like a contemporary art project that I've been you know really caring about and doing it very slowly, and where I. That project, to say it very quickly, it's it's like I'm obsessed of uh, of bringing both worlds, the the entertainment industry and the art, the contemporary art industry, 
and to elevate both from each other. Okay. So uh, forgetting about the low bro and the high bro and creating a, a high bro, like a mix of all together. Because I think, and I'm going to be quick with this because it's not coming. So um, I think it comes a time where right now you have to stop thinking of, thinking of pop art uh, when you think of the entertainment industry because okay. it has evolved so much into a new creature and with so many layers of perceptions and, and so on that uh, it, we need to, you know, go further. So uh, in that in that project, I, I played a lot with visuals, uh, with colors and lights and uh, many eyes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that I incorporate something of that into, into We Live. And also at the same time, um, I didn't want to go because you have a, a, the lion, for example, that, that mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the Bengal Reaper. Uh, it doesn't go too, so far away uh, where you can disconnect yourself with that, with that animal mm -hmm. because it's so fantastical that you won't relate so much when you read the story. So that's why I, I went for a, you know, and a lion, for example, and that because you can relate to that animal. Mm. But then I made it a little bit. And also, you can like relate to the dangerosity of the real animal. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so exactly. it looks like a lion, so it should be as dangerous as a exactly. lion. Exactly. That's okay. it. Yes. The same with Alice and mm. uh, uh, that. I mean, the, I know that has a name. It's a technique where you don't go so far away, like uh, like the movie Aliens, the, mm. the second one. They don't use they don't they don't use laser guns. They mm. use you know shell guns, uh, gunshots. And that's because even though it's so much further into the future, you need to the, the audience to be attached to what's happening there. And yeah. you, when you hear gunshots, it's, you know that it's also dangerous. Yes. Um, all right. And also, did you uh, Roy put uh, like, did you have an input also on the visual? Did you like uh, validate them? You, I, I think you were also discussing and maybe you, you had some ideas that uh, you wanted your brother to draw. No, le, I, no. Confío. Oh, sorry. <risa> Confío mucho en él. O sea, creo que la parte visual tiene claro lo que hace. Hablamos mucho no tanto del, de, de cómo fabricar la parte visual, sino de la psicología de y las criaturas o los personajes. Creo que ahí es donde sí participo, pero no en la parte estrictamente visual, no, no en los diseños. Um, yeah, he's saying no. He doesn't really uh, put a lot of input in the. He, he really leaves me a lot of freedom there. It, it's just because we really uh, um, discuss a lot of the psychological aspects of, of the creatures, of the characters. So that's where he really puts the input. And once we have that clear, I, the, he, uh, it's just my territory, the design one. Okay. So, so we're speaking about the end of the world at, at the, the beginning of We Live. Did the, like, the, the pandemic also have an influence of what you were putting into th that story? And Particularly uh, in terms of like, even when we are in a doomed situation, uh, human are going still to like act the worst <laughs> always. So. Um, it, it was strange because we, we wrote this before mm -hmm. the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit, I remember having a conversation. So was, wow. I mean, it's just, we're talking about that. And in fact, there was something really well, uh, with the title that happened really um, revealing about the time uh, because the book, the when we pitched it to Aftershock, uh, the first five chapters were called We Die. Oh. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> yeah. from there on, once you know the, you reach the end of the of the first volume, it turned the title changes to We Live. Mm. Sure, and that's how why, how is what it was going to be, and because of the pandemic, after shock, uh, you know, so we, we had a change, chat yeah. with them, and they mm. said, "I th they said, we think we should change the title because it's not a moment to you know, put this title there." So it's 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 just funny, not funny, but <laughs> it's strange how it it all happened with the pandemic, and the book was kind of talking about that, you know, the end of the world, but not just the end of the world. I mean, we all experienced something like uh, despair in the, that moment when the pandemic started. It was, and and you can feel that uh, we, can, we were also talking about that in the book. 
And as you say, with a human, even if it's the end of the world, it'll still find a way to keep, you know, messing it up. Messing it yeah. up. So, um, so it was just it, it. It was just a. I don't know in English how do you say it? it's like serendipity, <laughs> one uh, coincidence mm -hmm. that it wasn't planned, but you end up talking about the era, and kind of, and so it was really strange for us in that that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, not a comment for you. Um, but why did you choose also to have children uh, as the heroes of, of your books? Uh, because we have got Soho, Toto, and uh, Tala, which are inspired also by, by real children that are in, in your family. Uh, so why yes. did you make that decision? Is it easier to have the point of view of children in a situation like this? Um, I think uh, because we were talking about the... Uh, You know the human soul mm. and the the pureness on one side, and when there's nothing more pure than the soul of a children. I mean, when that hasn't entered in the you know the adult world with all the the second thoughts and layers and whatever corruption, violence, lies. Mm -hmm. So it's it kind of worked as a metaphor metaphor very well because they were children and at the same time i don't think it, did we even discuss no. why no no they were just ch yeah it happened yeah. It, it's, okay. it wasn't something conscious that no they need to be children it was just we never thought of doing adults the, yeah. as a main characters never so i don't know even I, right now i don't know why no, you I mean, it's you very inspired. Why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think it's just inspired by, for example, one big inspiration for the book is uh, the uh, Angelopoulos film uh, titled uh, "Landscape in the Mist," mm -hmm. and there's a feeling in that in that in that uh, film that we try to capture in in we live in some sort. It's about two siblings also that have to do a journey and it's also about life and how uh, life brings them down and then like uh, it's that confrontation be, be, uh, uh, of the human soul to the world to re their harsh reality so it's I think it was just a natural thing that happened it's not all right And so, how do you create a, a character? How do how does uh, like uh, someone like Hototo or Tala uh, just uh, be born from your mind? Do you have like a uh, uh, you wrote some some terms like an, in terms of characters, in terms of character, also physical and visual characteristics? So, how do how do you create uh, these characters? I think it happened once we decided it was going to be two siblings. I did the drawings. See, yes, I think no. Was it? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was so long. I mean, it's been years. So I'm um, the making. <laughs> But well, you should try to remember something that happened six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, because I think we were so comfortable creating that we were both enjoying at the same time. But um, I think it. It I did, I did the joints of the characters, and then uh, then no. I can't remember, but yes, I think, I think it happened that way. Once we had the story and they said it's going to be two siblings, sí. I did the the drawings of them, and then they took the personality <laughs> from from there on, and then we and that was all before jo uh, even writing the the, the script. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So you know how they were going to behave before even writing the story. Like you, you yes. knew that like uh, Hototo would be like really. Uh, a little bit naive, a little bit like uh, I want to be a superhero stuff. And, uh, yes, yes, that part. I mean, so also they're both very inspired. Uh, Tala is inspired on on Roy's uh, um, my daughter, daughter, mm -hmm. and Ototo is inspired on our, our nephew. nephew. So we had the you know the how they behaved very easy for us. Yeah, you just have to like sp spend an afternoon with them. And right. <laughs> <laughs> Or just film them. <laughs> and, you, and, and, you, and you get it right. But also, like, like there are adults characters. Yes. Also. Are they based on anyone you knew also? Or just... Maybe no, those are or? just... And they took their own personality. Like, you know, Simon was mm -hmm. very... Uh, from the start, we knew how he was going to be. 
and and for everybody was was just like that humbo was going to be like a i mean it it just they took the personality from from the story humbo was going to be a, a kind of huckleberry finn mm. Mm. and and a you know kind of a, a a tech you know from the a tech a tech a wise guy but it was really strange because it was we didn't even have to discuss so much about their personalities. We we both knew them, and, and that's how it happened. No, yeah. there was really no discussion how each of them was going to be. Okay, but wh while you were drawing and writing the the scripts, also how how was your how did how did you work? Did you like uh, did you do the dialogues and or did you just write the scripts also? So how how did it work? Uh, uh, once we had the plot uh, of what's go what was going to happen in each issue, yeah. Then we just sat down and broke it down to to mm. the pages. Yeah, into panels. Yeah, there's going to be twenty twenty two pages, and then we had to you know uh, decide why how we were going to use those twenty pages, and what was important, what wasn't, and and from there on, it's just and the dialogues came naturally. That that's where the personalities of the of the characters come alive with mm -hmm. dialogues. So it was just something we know. We just sit in the same room, each one of us with uh, their laptop in the Google Docs, mm. and we just start talking. Okay, what happens in this page? And we go one step at a time, and and that's how it happened. Really, no, there's no mystery to that. It was just we just work together very well. Sí, siempre sí decimos que está la sensación de es como si soltásemos los personajes en el lugar. Y los observásemos. Y a veces les enten, o sea, vemos lo que pasa y otras no nos dejan verlo. Yeah, and that's, that's his saying, Roy is saying that uh, he has the sensation of we just, you know, throw all the characters uh, in a table and just observe what they, they do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they they act like we, like, what did you say? Como, eh, tiene sentido. Like, it, it makes sense to that tiene character mm -hmm. doing that. And sometimes they surprise us. Okay. And like, oh wow! So you let you let yourselves be surprised by your characters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very much. Yes. And and it's like you. Could, I think writing is kind of like asking asking questions and seeing a little bit into the future and seeing where that takes you. And if it takes you to a place that you feel is good, and then you take that road. Mm. And if it doesn't, that means that characters, it's not like that. It's like a strange mix in in the of plot and character behavior. Okay. And they all have to come together and, and work for the for the whole. Because <clears throat> one thing that I'm I'm obsessed to is like nar narration storytelling is for me uh, creating a device uh, which purpose is to create an emotion in the end. Mm. It's like you you create a clock, you know, with all the cogs, everything, the mechanism. And you have to do it so, like, if that uh, device works, it will take you to uh, an em a, a exact emotion that you were planning. And if not, you failed. Yeah. yeah that, that device, it's not working right. So it's do you have the, the, like, the, the recipe for that? Because there are some <laughs> moments in really that are, like, harsh and even though uh, very cruel uh, mm, yeah. because uh, like yeah people die and uh, Ututu and Tara are like uh, taken into a mix of events that are really 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 hard uh, to, to, to live and yes. so how do you manage also like the, the whole the, this emotions that uh, that you're putting the whole this feeling that you put into into the to the comic there's no recipe I mean it's just it feels right mm. and did you like have to rework some 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 sequences uh, sometimes maybe and then you because maybe at first time it doesn't work like you, you you would then if you redraw or rewrite something but it works better afterwards yeah always like I mean it's in writing is very much uh, it's a hidden technique that you can't explain exactly but there's mm -hmm. something that you can it, you have to it's like a slingshot that. You have to release it. I'm sorry, I was doing the slingshot thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you you have to really uh, pull pull the string and decide when uh, the slingshot is ready to be you know released. Mm. And that's that's when the the emotion hits you because you 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 prepared it. 
And that there's a lot of that. There is a technique there. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but it's difficult to explain the technique. But it, there is a technique where you prepare, you you prepare the emotion, mm. and, and so you know when you reach it, uh, it was already you know um, put in place in a, before. Yeah, and one and one of the strengths of uh, of the comic book, I think, is like really like like we are very close to uh, to the two main characters, and we can see also their their dreams, their hopes, uh, mostly for for Ototo, but also Tala, which is like really uh, intended to uh, to protect her little brother, mm -hmm. and that drives them uh, all the way from start to beginning because they they have each other and they have to to protect themselves also have the hope to be saved uh, to uh, to to live through the the end of the world but also you have to develop the whole universe so you have also to put like a uh, uh, backstories from for other characters so how do you manage the balance between like we you want your readers to uh, like uh, to be close to your characters but you also want them to discover the whole world so how i think it's uh, it, it can be tricky maybe es que ahora mismo estamos creando o sea, hasta donde hay cosas que nos gustaría contar, pero no podemos contarlas porque nos aleja del, del foco. Mm. Yep, and it was Roy saying that we are creating, and at the same time, there are a lot of things that we have we can't put in the book because it it, it takes away from the the other thing that is more important. So it's it's ¿qué decir más? No, sí, y, y, y que realmente sí, no, ve, nosotros vemos el universo. Pero hay cosas que no podemos... O sea, lo, necesitamos verlo para poder contar lo que estamos haciendo. El lector no lo sabe, pero nosotros hay información que de, de manera invisible está. Yeah, yeah. They were saying that we do... Like, we see the whole universe and, and we know we can't show it all. And, but in the end, there's something that uh, it does uh, influence because, because, because we know it There's, it's going to show in, in, even a little bit in in a very in a very small decision that you you make or in drawing, and at the same time uh, another thing is the importance of the the ellipses. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of ellipses here because because we wouldn't be able to tell in five issues what we told without those uh, time jumps. So you have to just tell the exact moment that is important and make the best of it and because you know you won't have more than two panels maybe to, to mm. say that that thing that you want to say and at the same time there's you have to respect uh, the rhythm uh, and and the cl climax of every small arc that you put in everything you do want to do not not in the whole arc mm. but every scene has a an arch then and a climax And a rhythm that you have to—it uh, has to work. It mm. is even more important that than than the information that you put there, because if you want to put more information or you want more things to happen in that scene, and you only have one page, you will lose the rhythm. Mm. So you have to take away a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that you will have love to put there, and just to to respect the rhythm. That's. Okay, and there's also something about the violence in Weave because it's a comic book which is uh, very violent. So, did you have like, a, did you weren't you afraid a little bit to go too far for, from sometimes because like uh, people are <laughs> eaten alive, beheaded, uh, ch children <laughs> children die also. Yes. So this is a a, a lot to take also mm. for from, even though for a mature uh, audience. So uh, also, do, how did you keep the balance or uh, uh, between what was too much to show and what was also essential to understand that the story is uh, deadly serious. Um, I think the, the uh, it was important to create the contrast of love and and violence, and to to us it was really important because you have to show what's the real danger that those uh, characters are facing, and if you sugarcoat it. You're just telling a, a tale without really. You're not talking about the human condition. You're just creating a story, and I think it's more important to talk about the human condition. Uh, in our minds, it's like, and there are very I don't know, awful moments, like when they 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 shoot the the, the kids, mm -hmm, and the, mm -hmm. the aseptists, and but that happens in the real world. I mean, not exactly that. 
but there's a lot of violence happening in the world to kids, to children, to uh, adults. And I think it's important that uh, we have to talk about that. We, you, you, you shouldn't be hiding that mm. because that's what it's going to um, maybe take us to another place where you realize uh, what's happening in, in the world. So I think that that was a very important part of we live and 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 luckily uh, we didn't have any really no nada gratuito no, no nothing is uh, is gratuitous that's what Roy says and it all has a meaning it's, it not, mm. we're not doing that just for the impact of the moment we really want it's part of the the, the device that I was speaking about about creating the emotion that was part an important part of the of the mechanism mm. yeah okay so you had also to work with an editor. Uh, or did he give you like a total freedom or did you also have discussions uh, the two of you with your editor at Aftershock oh no we really were very free because right. we don't really know here in France uh, how does it work uh, with Aftershock comics we we have some uh, comic books published by them that are translated into France but we don't really know how they are the work conditions with uh, this particular editor so what can you tell us about that Well, uh, our experience was uh, very creative uh, uh, freedom, freedom mm -hmm. uh, free, because uh, they once they accepted the story and they knew what was going to happen in the whole five issues, we just wrote it, each issue and sent it to them. And the only changes they asked for is the title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and something else. <laughs> no, it was uh, things that uh, a little thing. helped the story. Like um, I remember in 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 the first issue because we weren't over the the page count that we mm. should have done, and which should have been 20 pages. And there were things that we left out to respect that 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 page count. And they told us, okay, I think you need to establish this part first. And and they gave us more more pages to do that. So okay. it ended up 24 pages. But everything that they pointed out, it was always uh, what a great editor does. That it helps you and it shows you where the story would be, be benefit uh, from. But they didn't and directed any to any place they just let us really create so i guess that that's really different from your work experience uh, in the mainstream industry uh, yes but at the same time it's it's different because of another aspect that uh this is the first time i'm writing also oh. so it's different when you have a script and you have you know a, a month to do that and that's a script and just do it and you don't have the 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 time or the or the the place to to start uh, discussing discussing too much things and I would like to do this or that no you just have to do that then you have you have a script just draw it sure. and was aftershock your first choice uh, or did you also submit the project to to I don't know image boom IDW's no, uh, no we yeah we we just sent it to aftershock because I knew Mike March uh, the editor in chief from mm. from DC when he was working at DC and the bad titles and we kept in touch uh, during the years and that's why I decided to 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 pitch to him Okay, mm. and so how did you uh, how did you live through, through the the very good reception that it had? Uh, mm. Also, so it's starting to have a really good reception also here in France uh, mm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see that, but you also had a tremendous success uh, in the United States. So how do you how do you cope with that? <laughs> Estamos muy contentos y agradecidos, pero creo que todavía no hemos estamos tan en, enfocados en, en lo que va a pasar ahora que no sé, también creo que el hecho de vivir en España y, y ver que lo ocurre todo tan lejos nos tiene un poco desconectados Yeah, Nancy saying that we're very grateful and at the same time uh, because we live in Spain we're kind of disconnected to what's really, you know, the, the real reception that's going uh, on in the, in, in the US But at, and, and also at the same time We are so focused in what we we know we want to tell 
that I think we, first we were afraid we weren't able to, we're not going to be able to continue because if the sales weren't good, and that's that's all you're gonna read of we live and you know that maybe is, uh, that sometimes in the indie field it's really hard for comic books just to to live right exactly mm. so that's that's i think we we're more happy that we they told us we were going to be able to continue than being so aware of the real reception and because we we we're still in in the edge i think uh, the, the the book needs to be uh, you know, more aware of and needs to, uh, I think, uh, reach more audience. So we are happy, but we still know. I mean, we have so much things to tell that we just want to be able mm. to tell that. And doesn't it put more pressure on you too? No, that's because <laughs> men that know, know that you know that you've got readers. Yes. <laughs> so that, you, you, yes. You, you really don't have to, uh, to <laughs> deceive them. To it's, it's true. Yeah, that, that, that we've spoken about that because... And uh, not even, not just because we have now readers that are expecting that. Uh, we brought ourselves to a point where it's difficult for the reader to know what's going to some create some doubt mm -hmm. about what's going to happen when we live now that the status quo changed so much. So we're like, uh, we're, we're still working with the same freedom. We, we're going to tell what we want to tell. But at the same time, we are more scared of the reaction that we're going to get with the second volume, for example. Are you going to like to check on the reviews on the internet? Do you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, did, did you already do that? Uh, yes, 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 we do. There hasn't been that much of re reviews. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, and yeah, we do that. But at the same time, well, you can't help not not wanting to know what the the reception is. So we just do it and we trust that there's going to be enough people liking the, the book to so it can continue than people that don't like it. Okay. And then also a, a very special part about We Live that you have a, a soundtrack uh, to, yes. to it. So uh, why, who did that? Uh, how did it work? So I take it you're the musician. So Los músicos son mis amigos. The musicians are his friends. Da, eh, el, el principio fue pedirle a un guitarrista que nos pasase una, 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 una música para el vídeo de promo. Yeah, the, the first thing that happened is that we asked a, a friend of his, he's a guitarist from his band, and to create a, a, a composition uh, just for, we wanted to do with a cover Uh, a, a short animation with a soundtrack to just to give the book uh, a feeling. Mm. So you know, with with manga, when you have the first two pages in color and then it's black and white, but you still can like uh, imagine how the whole book is, mm -hmm. the, the the atmosphere of the book because of those two pages. Well, we, we tried to do that first with just putting music on an animation of, of the cover. Yeah, for, al verlo era como que se ampliaba el, la sensibilidad y llamamos me yo no creo que llamo a quién y, y si hacemos una banda sonora estoy pensando lo mismo <laughs> yeah so from so when we saw how it you know it, it it looked with the music that small animation we both thought oh man uh, separately we thought uh, wouldn't it be cool to have a whole soundtrack Uh, for the book and I remember Roy calling me and he's saying I have an idea <laughs> why don't we do a soundtrack and I immediately told him that's what I was thinking so he called another friend of his and El Hombre Viento the guitarist was uh, Mario Gonzalo Lorente and they just uh, they liked the idea enough and they started working with, uh, with, you know, with the scenes that we were explaining to them it happened very organic too because Uh, we we it was the music was created at the same time that the the book was being created okay because that's really when i was listening to one of the first two tracks that even though with the with like the illustrations that we've got on, on the cover you can feel the the, the last of us feeling but even yeah. though more with the music so i guess this was also an in, in inspiration uh, for the the soundtrack yes i think mm. uh, there were two big inspiration i think and uh, the last of us and mm. death stranding 
because also, it's also okay, a game also, with, yeah. uh, mm. has a, a lot of uh, um, the the music plays a lot of uh, in, in, the st in the in the feeling of the of the whole experience. So, but no Miyazaki at all then, because uh, I, I I've said before that I I, I also got a, a feeling about the Miyazaki's work and uh, mostly like uh, yeah uh, Totoro or even uh, Mononoke Hime. So was yeah, it also? The, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the designs of both of the characters mm. are, are a clear homage to Miyazaki. So, uh, but it's, it was more inspiration on the on the visual side. Mm. There might be something in the music, but it wasn't uh, conscious. Okay, so I've got also questions because uh, we are like uh, now we are recording this podcast. Like uh, the the first book of uh, Era of Palladians will be out mm -hmm. uh, normally. So, what can you tell us about uh, We Live Era of Palladians? Even though the, the the French readers will have to wait, but I know so that people that are listening to this podcast are also reading in English. Yeah, so, okay. what can you tell us about that? Especially because I think there are two uh, number one issues that are telling the story from two uh, separate point of views. Mm. Yeah. Yes, that's quite a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> and kind of yeah. Time. Tell me, <laughs> and because you're drawing both. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it happened because. Uh, Why would you put such an effort? <laughs> <laughs> you're only human. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the story needed because uh, we spoke also uh, for months about the the new arc, and we came to a moment where what we wanted to put it in the first issue was impossible to put even if you put so, uh, <laughs> the ellipses uh, it wasn't there wasn't space for mm. to really create the the momentum of a first issue and so we came with the idea okay what about if we do two parallel number ones to put all the stuff that we really need to tell and that's when we so we we proposed that to aftershock And they loved it from mm -hmm. the start, so that was lucky on, on our side. And what makes it special is that first you'll you have a different experience if you read the black first or the white first, because mm -hmm. one will influence uh, how you perceive the other one because you will have information. And I thought uh, we thought that that was really like uh, cool to do something like um, not so much in other. If you, uh, well, you should here in in France. The work of Cortázar in Hatska, I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, it's a book uh, where Julio Cortázar is the the author. Mm -hmm. was, I think it was very famous in France in the in the seventies or for that. Where you start reading the book and you'll mm -hmm. you can you have two ways of reading the book uh, from start to finish, or you can jump from one chapter to the other. And okay. So you have two two different experiences of the same narration, and we kind of not that this has nothing to do with that, but gives you the game of 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 uh, observing in a story in a different way because uh, it's like uh, Steve Rotterdam from AfterShock and put it in a nice way. It's like two trains that. Going in, in two different in the same direction, and they come together at the end. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you're doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you're mimicking something, that the, the, the mic. I have to tie my hands, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's like two trains that go in in the same direction, but on different rails. Mm. And at the end of the issue, they will join one and just become one train. Okay. So that that was the that's the idea behind black and white. And they both, because we we didn't want to just focus uh, on on the experience of uh, suddenly becoming a superhero book, because that's not we live. Mm. Uh, we needed to t also tell the the human side. So we really needed to, on one side, bring the Palladians to the same struggle as the as the as the human mm. civilians, and uh, and also tell the struggles. That the civilians are are facing because we start this story, uh, in they are under siege, uh, because they're surrounded by beasts, new beasts, gigantic beasts, and they're also losing the shield that kept the shields mm. and the beast away, and so there. I mean, one thing that I remember 
that we spoke about is the situation in, in Syria. Okay. Where you're living inside a city that's under siege and you don't know what to do because yeah, you know you're going to die inside and if, and if you try to go outside, you're most probably also going to die and, and you have to fight and it's a really de desperate uh, situation. So we wanted to put uh, Megalopolis 9 in that kind of situation. Even if it's uh, another kind of story, mm. sci-fi, fantastic, entertaining, it's not the same. <clears throat> so that we needed the room to to really tell that that struggle from both sides, from the both uh, perspectives. And there's also something that is going to change a lot. It's the relationship between to, uh, Ototo and Tara, because at first uh, Tara was putting uh, her little brother, but now that is aged up and is all superior stuff. That's really uh, really uh, like invert the dynamics between the two, I guess. Yes, exactly. And and I also. Uh, I don't want to say too much about uh, how they evolved, but they have evolved psycholo uh, psychologically, both of them. And <clears throat> and that puts both in a situation where they both have uh, a specific feeling that uh, that it's... Uh, I don't want to say too much. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's all right. You, you don't have to, uh, to, to spoil everything, especially right. uh, just before the, the book is out. So I've got one last question. Uh, at the end of the, the five, uh, the chapter five, so we see like the whole uh, aliens uh, council that are submitting a vote uh, to the whole galaxy, like a vote green for if you want to uh, like save humanity and vote red if you just want to let them die. How would you have, uh, how would you vote if you were in this galac uh, galactic council? I would uh, take uh, them under. I mean, I would uh, accept yeah. the, the refugees. Yeah. Uh, yes. Green. So you're both nice, nice guys. <laughs> um, it's, it's really nice. It's it's really nice to to have you. So thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, so we live uh, is out in France at uh, 404 Comics, and uh, so we were really really pleased to have Inaki and Roy Miranda to uh, to present it in our Super Friends uh, Talk Shop. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and I guess uh, I'll see you later for the second round when it's out uh, also here in France. Merci, Bye. merci. <laughs>